Hi guys, it's Mona Shake. Welcome back to Mona's Rants. It's episode four today. Uh, very excited to be back. Uh, as you all guys all know, I am doing a 30 day challenge. So you can catch me here uh, streaming live on YouTube all, uh, every weekday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Pacific. Um, I was streaming on Facebook uh, for the last two days, uh, but now I am also streaming on YouTube. Uh, so I'm trying to bring in uh, the fans in uh, from YouTube. Um, and if you guys want to come and stream, uh, you guys want to watch, please go right ahead. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited about today. Uh, today, we are, I'm talking about uh, uh, Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine. Now, um, I have never been into the teen angst, uh, super angry music uh, like Rage Against the Machine. Uh, but I, of course, have heard of Rage Against the Machine, mainly because it's a giant band. Uh, and, uh, you know, I started listening to their music and it's pretty pissed off. Uh, it's pretty, uh, and, but it's really good. Like, I really uh, like the lyrics. I, I liked uh, the pissed offness. I mean, I just felt like an angry teenager and I was like, yeah. Let's go burn something. Uh, but I felt their, I felt their energy. Uh, so I like Rage Against the Machine. And I don't know if you guys heard, but Tom Morello, the guitarist of Rage Against the Machine, was getting trolled by a fan. Okay? Getting trolled by a fan. And he tweeted at them. And this is what he said. He said, music, his name is Scott Castaneda. And he said, music is my sanctuary. And the last thing I want to hear it's political BS when I'm listening to music. As far as I'm concerned, you and Pink are completely done. Keep running, keep running your mouth and ruining your fan base. What the fuck? Okay, keep running your mouth and ruining your fan base. And then, and then Tom Morello came back punching. Okay, he came, he came back with a fantastic comeback. Okay, and he said, Scott. What music of mine were you a fan of that didn't contain political BS? Question mark. I need to know so I can delete it from the catalog. Oh, burn. Oh, ooh, Tom just did a serious burn to Scott. Okay. Now, Scott got his ass pummeled on Twitter by other fans because are you fucking stupid? Scott sounds like a fucking moron to me. Um, I have never even been to a Rage Against the Machine concert, and I know that what their the 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 name their name alone has a political stance. How the fuck are you going to their shows or are a fan of theirs and not know that they're making political statement in their sh in their songs? Like, are you just a moron? Or I, I don't understand what this guy Scott's brain is at, that he is coming out and saying that he doesn't want to hear political BS. Like, so this tweet had over 100,000 likes and nearly 20,000 retweets. And of course, countless replies, because listen, if, if there's one platform you don't want to get trolled on, it's Twitter. Trust me, I know, because sometimes I am trolling Donald Trump and sometimes I get trolled by fans uh, or, you know, or haters rather. Uh, and it's uh, Twitter. Twitter is the Wild West. OK, so tread carefully. Um, and then people coming started coming out and saying, hey, Scott, have you ever listened to the lyrics of any Rage Against the Machine song? Uh, yeah, hell, even the name of the band is political, precisely. I mean, what what is this guy talking about? And I looked at the name and I was like, oh, man, Rage Against the Machine, right? You can tell he's not, it's not like, it's pretty clear if you have any kinds of brains. Now, I don't belong to the Genius Society. I am no Mensa member, but Rage Against the Machine. I don't think he's talking about regular machinery. When he's talking about the machine, he's talking about the system, the government, um, a.k.a. the political system that we exist in. It's not uh, rage against uh, rage against the donuts. It's not uh, rage against the traffic or rage against the fast food chains. It's rage against the machine. You know, um, I would have been shocked if their name, if the name of their band name was like conceived on the fact that they hated any kind of machinery like that would be hilarious right like that would be 
that would be so hilarious because it, it might as well have been an Amish band. Like, imagine Raging Against the Machine was like an Amish band. They're like, it's Rage Against the Machine because we actually hate machinery. That would be fucking hysterical. Uh, I mean, their entire existence is political, for God's sake. So then I was just like, oh, man. I got to go out and look up the history of Rage Against the Machine and who are these people and what are they about, okay? So Rage Against the Machine is like a pretty badass band, okay? So Tom Morello is their guitarist. Um, but besides that, um, it was formed in 1991. It's a mix of like rap and like rock. They call it new metal and new metal. Um, and they're, uh, you know, they're consist of, I'll tell you, you know, the, the name the you know, you have, uh, Mr. Della Rocha, who's, uh, you know, their, uh, their, their lead guy. Uh, you have, I am like literally, uh, just trying to get you guys information here. Okay. Uh, you, you know, there were four, there's an American rock band. They're four, they were four in Los Angeles. Uh, their vocalist is Zach Della Rocha. Uh, the bassist and backing vocalist is Tim Comerford. The guitarist is of course, Tom Morello. And the drummer is Brad Wilk. These guys have been like singing about political views and revolutionary stuff like forever. Like that's the entire existence of their entire band. Uh, And I mean, they've done pretty well for themselves. They have sold over 16 million records worldwide. They've done pretty well. They were inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, you know, in, uh, in, in the first in their first year of eligibility, 2017 and 2018. Um. Although both bits failed, so they say. Uh, but I mean, these guys are very, very accomplished. They they sing like rap metal, rap rock, funk metal, alternative metal, new metal, hard rock. I mean, these guys are fucking out there, like saying "fuck you" to the system. Um, so I I was listening to some of their songs because I was like, man, I gotta I gotta listen to their song. You know, maybe Scott thought that the songs of their names, like "Killing in the Name." or know your enemy, or take the power back, was about getting laid. I think that's what Scott thought. Because, like, it's not, maybe he thought it was killing in the name of pussy. Uh, Know your enemy, also known as erectile dysfunction. Uh, Take the power back by by taking Cialis. You know? Maybe he thought that's what it was about. It was by getting laid. Take the power back? Like, holy fucking shit. Like, that's, like, challenging the fucking system. The machine, as they like to call it. I mean, their song "Killing in the Name" has lyrics that are, I shit you not, these are their lyrics. Fuck you! I won't do what you tell me. Let me repeat that. Their song "Killing in the Name" lyrics are, "Fuck you! I won't do what you tell me." That's definitely giving the government the middle finger, if any fucking thing. It's not. You know, it's not, they're not giving finger to their parents, you know, when they their parents ask them to clean the room. They're giving the middle finger to the fucking government is what they're saying. I mean, come on, Scott, even Helen, Helen Keller could see that. For God's sake. Come on, man. Like, fucking grow up. Like, open your eyes. What the fuck are you listening to? Um, I mean, look, artists, activism, politic, it, politics, it always goes hand in hand. It really does. Like at, at the revolutionary time that we are in right now to, you know, just kind of passively sit, just passively sit or to be indifferent about what's happening. You know, you have taken a stance. You may think that you may say, hey, you know what? I don't want to make a political stance or I don't want to get into this political BS as the fucking guy Scott says. But let me tell you something. As a stand-up comic, as an artist myself, in the time that we live in right now, if you are quiet, you have also taken a stance. And your stance is that you don't give a fuck about the revolution. You don't give a fuck about Black Lives Matter. And that's why you're quiet, calling it, oh, I don't want to get involved in the political BS. Well, guess what? You live in the society, you are part of the political BS. So either you can be for it or you can be against it. So take your fucking side, okay? And Scott obviously has made it very, very clear to us on which side he fucking sits, okay? I mean, I think that the move to sit back at a time like we are in today uh, and to say that you don't want to, you know, like make a political or be like too political or, oh, I'm so tired of listening to politics and you don't want to be part of the political BS. To me, it's a cowardice move. 
to me, you're saying you're a fucking coward and you don't want to stand for what's right. And you know what? And for that, time will time will pay you for for your stance, if that's what your stance is indeed. Uh, what sounds to me like that's what Scott's stance is, because he just don't he just wants to listen to music. Um that he's been listening to has been political the entire time, but somehow is just getting the memo on it because he's a fucking idiot. Um, you know, um, you know, I, I think when when uh, artists and I, I listen, I have co- comedian friends who are like, oh, I don't want to get political. I don't want to. I just don't even touch that stuff. I don't just don't even want to get into it. Whether you fucking like it or not, you're already part of the political narrative, okay? It's like uh, when Melania Trump wore that green jacket. You remember where it said, I really don't care, do you? Well, Melania, let me tell you something. We really don't care about you. Actually, we don't give a fuck about you. You are that one immigrant that we could fucking care less about. If your ass gets deported today, I would be the first one to come to the airport to see you off. Because you know what, Melania? We really don't care. So fuck off. Um, um, the songs uh, that I really connected with uh, for Rage Against the Machine was uh, "Killing Killing in the Name." Uh, Mike Check. Uh, it was a really good a good song. I, I, I don't know if you guys are fans or not, but it's so much like rage and angst in these songs that you know you want to like scream and shout and let it all out. And that music to me is like. It's like an angry teenager meet a woke prof- professor. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, oh, wow, these guys are, you know, there's all this teenage, this anger, this angst. And then you're just like, wow, but it's really profound. It's really like thought out, thought out you know, and it's very like, but it's also very provocative. So I, I really liked it. Um, you know, in uh, 1999, uh, Rage Against the Machine uh, played at Woodstock 99, which was like the second largest uh Uh, I believe the second large Woodstock concert because they were trying to replicate what Woodstock had done before. And of course they had all these incredible bands come out and perform. Um, And I was reading about, you know, they had like, they had like some freaking phenomenal, you know, performers that came out you. And it was very, it was also very controversial because uh, a lot of women claimed that they were being sexually harassed. Like it was like 400,000 people showed up. I mean, it was like this massive concert. Right. Um, And, uh, you know, they had, uh, they they had like Limp Bizkit there. They had James Brown. uh, They had George Clinton. They had Insane Clown Posse. They had, of course, Rage Against the Machine. Sheryl Crow was there. DMX was there. I mean, it was uh, like, it was like, a really like a top-notch concert uh and shit went down so everybody's already like so fucking revved up and fucking angry and fucking in it and then rage against the machine goes on stage and takes the american flag and burns it and it incinerates like immediately and the crowd fucking loses their shit okay the crowd is going bonkers they're like yeah fuck the system fuck this you know, so I'm saying to myself, well, if you're a Rage Against the Machine fan, don't you fucking know about that? Like, don't you know about Woodstock 99, you know, uh, that they burnt the American flag? I mean, if you're going to talk about making a fucking political BS statement, holy fucking fuck. That is the ultimate political BS statement to be like, yo, I fucking hate the system and I'm going to burn the fucking flag. And by the way, thank God for the Constitution protected First Amendment freedom of speech. Thank God for that. Uh, which, as we all know, Trumpy at the time, at the moment, uh, Mr. Uh, Orange Abe, the dictator, is trying to take those rights away from us. He doesn't want us uh, to have those freedoms. He doesn't want us to come out and say that if we are unhappy with the current government, to come out and tell the government to fuck off, to fucking do the, do the, do the right thing, to uphold the Constitution. That is the job of the president of the United States. Uphold the Constitution, not to shut it down, not to get rid of the checks and balances, but your job is to uphold the Constitution. And let me tell you something, if Rage Against, if anybody has practiced that, uh, you know, the, the, the first, con- you know, the, 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 the Constitution so well, it's Rage Against the Machine, okay? Upholding, uh, you know, freedom of speech. God bless for Tom Morello to come out and talk shit and, you know, check this fucking asshole the way he did. And God bless for that. Um, 
And, uh, you know, they asked Tom Morello about the controversy. They were like, hey, man, you know, like a lot of women, uh, you know, said that they were sexually harassed and like, you know, and uh, these 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 teenagers were going crazy. Like, what do you have to say about that? And uh, Tom Morello had a, you know, he had a pretty, you know, they, they questioned him in 1999. And he this is what he said. He said, hey, man, leave the kids alone. I've had enough of the frenzied demonization of young people surrounding Woodstock. 99, yes, Woodstock was filled with predators, the degenerate idiots who assaulted those women, uh, the greedy promoters who wrung every cent out of thirsty concert goers, and last but not least, the predator media that turned a blind eye to real violence and scapegoated the quarter of a million music fans of Woodstock 99, the vast majority of whom had the time of their lives. And I'm sure they did, and I, I, and I wish I could have been there. Uh, but, uh, I was married to an asshole at the time. Uh, so, but that's a story for another day. Uh, and sadly I couldn't be there, but this is like some fucking like incredible stuff where you have a band that is using its platform to make pretty hardcore political statements, uh, about, you know, systemic racism, who's making statements about uh, you know, uh, politicians in power who are abusing their power. I mean, you know, if, if democracy is anything, it is calling out the bullshit. It is having the power as the people to speak out if we have corrupt leaders, right? That's the that's the option that if you live under a dictatorship, you don't have that option. I know because I lived under a dictatorship in Pakistan and you didn't have the ability to go march in the streets and make signs and say, fuck you. OK, you didn't have the ability to take the Pakistani flag and fucking burn it. If you burn the Pakistani flag, they'll probably fucking put gasoline on you, or burn you with the flag. OK, those are that's the difference between a democracy and a dictatorship. You can't take it to the streets. You can't rebel against the government. You can't say, hey, government, fuck you. You're taking my fucking freedom away. And the government's like, you know, because it's a dictatorship, they're like, ah, fucking freedom? No, fuck that. We get to call the shots. We're the leaders, which is why I am currently terrified of what is happening to our country. I do not physically, emotionally, and mentally have the capacity to go through an other a uh, country where I am living under a dictatorship. I literally don't have the energy. I am exhausted, which is why if we don't take a stance as a country to remove Donald Trump from office, we might be looking at the last of American democracy, everybody. And it's fucking terrifying. That's why we need voices like Rage Against the Machine to stand up. We need voices like other uh, political artists who stand up and, you know, take stances. That's why people like myself, I'm a comedian. I'm not even a rock star. Although, I don't know if you know, but all comedians secretly want to be rock stars. And I think all rock stars secretly want to be comedians. Even some athletes want to be comedians because I've seen them. Um, but it's true. I mean, if you're a music fan, okay, um, there are a shit ton of bands um, who have taken political stances. I mean, like, so many, and I was looking them up, and I was like, "Man, how many bands out there have made have made political stances?" I'll read you some of the names, okay? Anti flag, that's pretty fucking explanatory. Maybe Scott couldn't get them on that one. Maybe Scott would look at that and be like, "Anti flag, you mean like flag as in what? Like flag, a, you know, flag a car? Like flag what? Like what am I flagging exactly? Because Scott sounds like a fucking moron. Um, enter Shikari, uh, Rise Against, Flowbots, Public Enemy, Bad Brains, Voice That's Fire, Against Me, Tracy Chapman, Willie Nelson, for fuck's sake, uh, Bruce Springsteen, Bob Dylan, Eminem, Madonna, uh, my God, uh, Green Day, uh, Midnight Oil, System of a Down, uh, MC5, Panic Street Preachers. I mean, uh, even even uh, U2 has made political stances. I mean, there are so, I mean, the names go on and on and on. And you never hear people come out, you know, to come and tweet at them and be like, oh, stay in your lane. You know, have you ever noticed whenever it's the liberal uh, artists who come out and make political stances, the conservative side or the far right always is like, do your job. Just sing the song. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. No, don't make any political stances. But then somebody like Kanye West would go and sit with Donald Trump at the White House. They'd be like, 
Thank you, Kanye. Good job. We needed you to make that political stance. Good job, Kanye. No, you should use your platform to voice your opinion. Well, fuck you. How is it good for one? It's not good for the other. If Kanye can come out and voice his, you know, conservative views because he's a fucking, he's lost his fucking mind because he married a goddamn Kardashian wearing a goddamn MAGA hat. Like, what are you, out of your fucking mind? Then you know what? Fucking Rage Against the Machine and Eminem and Madonna and Bob Dylan and Willie Nelson, all these guys can also come out and make political stances because they're doing the exact same fucking thing. They're just on the opposite sides and they're both practicing their First Amendment and thank God for that, okay? Comedians secretly, I feel, want to be, you know, uh, like, look, comedians get a lot of shit. Like, I've gotten a lot of shit on stage. Sometimes I make certain political stances. I get a lot of shit. For instance, this is a true story. Uh, I was doing a veteran show in Vegas. Uh, um, this is like two, three years ago. So I'm doing the show, and it's a veteran show. It's during the day. It's in a casino. Uh, and uh, the crowd is like 50 plus, and they're all white. Okay? And here comes this brown girl brown Muslim girl uh, and I get up there and I start telling jokes. Now they specifically told me, they're like, don't do any political jokes today. Okay. This crowd is not going to like it. The crowd is really not going to feel it. So I was like, all right, well, you know what? So I just stuck with like more like family jokes and stuff with more about talking about my family uh, and how I grew up in Pakistan and stuff like that. And as I'm like maybe five or six minutes into my set, I hear this guy in the middle of the crowd go, and I was, you know, because I was saying, hey, guys, today's veterans, uh, you know, today's veterans, uh, you know, veterans shows, please, please give it up for the veterans. And this fucking guy in the middle of the show gets up and he goes, liar, you don't care about the veterans. And I was like, I don't care about the veterans just because I look like this, just because I'm Muslim, just because I came from another country and I and I live here and I became a citizen this that means that I don't care about the veterans? Of course I, fuck, I give a fuck about the veterans. If it wasn't for the veterans, you know, they I have much respect for the veterans. Why would I not have respect for the veterans? So I was just like, all right, because I had the lights down. I was like, can you bring the lights up, please? And I was like, and can you put the spotlight on the person who said that? So I'm like, oh, I'm like, who said that? I'm like, you want to get up and talk to me now? So the guy got quiet. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, you don't want to talk to me now? I was like, you're not such a bad boy now, you know? Uh, I was like, hey, how many people here want this guy to shut the fuck up, okay? And the entire crowd started clapping because they really wanted to hear what I had to say. And I was like, great. So I was like, now you hurt the crowd. Shut the fuck up. Bring the lights back down, okay? And then he didn't heckle me at all. And the greatest thing was that the veterans, even though, look, they're they're conservative. They are, you know, probably Trump supporters. They're probably Republicans, Okay. But we still had this kind of mutual respect because they understood that what they fought for was the First Amendment, was freedom of speech. That's what they fought for, freedom for everybody. Not just white people, brown people, black people, Asian people, Latino people, everybody, LGBTQ, it doesn't matter. You're an American, you're on American soil, you have the freedom to express yourself, okay? That's what they fought for, and they respected that. And they were so lovely to me. They, like, bought my T-shirts. They took pictures with me. You know, they wanted to know more about my background. Like, they were just lovely. So I, I think there's also this kind of misunderstanding that if you are conservative, then you're just a complete asshole. And I think I think there's a difference. I think there's a difference between uh, being a current Trump supporter. I think there's a war between the old GOP and the new GOP. I think the old GOP still values the country. They still respect you know, the amendment, they still respect people who have different points of views versus the fucking current Trump supporters or a bunch of dickheads, you know, who are, who are all about the neo-Nazi world, who are all about, you know, a white power, uh, they could care less about brown or black people or any other minority in this country for that matter. Um, and that's the difference, in my opinion, anyways. Uh, but I, I still have respect for some of the old GOP people. I mean, fuck, look, like Mitt Romney came out and marched for Black Lives Matter. Did you ever think Mitt Romney was ever going to march? I was like shocked. I could not believe. Listen, you may not agree, agree with his political point of views, but you got to give credit where credit's due. The man came out and supported Black Lives Matter. He was like, look, there are, you know, fucking fucked up cops who are going out there and kill, killing innocent black people. 
those fuckers need to be brought to justice. They're not just going to take an administrative leave and then down a few months down the line, the uh, charges are going to be dropped and they're just going to walk free. Fuck that. Those days are over. Fuck that. If you have killed an innocent black person just because that's what your fucked up training was told or that's the kind of fucked up as environment that you're in or whatever the fuck your excuse is, you are fucking going to prison and you're going to do your time. That's where we're at. This is what the revolution is about. And going back to what Rage Against the Machine is doing and what comedians like myself is doing, I mean, look, if you look at uh, Richard Pryor, if you look at George Carlin, you look at Chris Rock, you look at Dave Chappelle, uh, Wanda Sykes, I mean, they're all so well known in their comedy because of their political and social stances. I mean, that's what, especially Carlin, I mean, holy fucking hell, even Pryor, like so heavy duty political, they became, they, they made a name for themselves. I mean, they're staples in the comedy world because of the balls to get up and talk about this. Lenny Bruce, the great Lenny Bruce, you know, was making political statements at a time when it was a no, no, you couldn't talk about race. You couldn't talk about religion. You couldn't talk about gender differences. You couldn't curse on stage. Lenny Bruce broke that barrier for the rest of us, for your Carlin and your priors and comedians like myself to go up on stage and talk about the shit that we do, okay? I can't imagine uh, going up on stage and somebody telling me, oh, you can't get political. You can't do that. And you know what? Let me tell you something. That has been done to me. And where was it done to me? In a Middle Eastern country, okay? I was flown out to headline a show in the Middle Eastern country, I go out there and the first thing out of their mouth is you can get political, but do not get into politics of our country. Do not talk about the politics of uh, Emirates. Do not talk about the um, politics of Saudi Arabia. And I was like, what happens if I do? They're like, you will be banned from ever coming back here. Do you understand what a thin skin asshole you got to be? You know, to be like, ah, oh, yeah, you can you can talk shit about your country. You can talk shit about America. You can talk po- shit about the politics in, uh, in the West, but you can't talk, you know, politics about our country. Okay. We, thank you for making that statement to let me know how tiny your balls really are. Thank you for that. Um, man, artists. I mean, that's, to, listen, to me, as, as an artist, like, if you, uh, are not making some kind of a stance or do not take a side or do not stand for something worthy that is something that is worthy of fighting for, then to me, your art is empty. To me, anyways, like your art has no meaning. It doesn't have that weight, you know? And that's what I strive to do with my comedy and everything that I do um, is to have that weight, is to have that stance, is to make something powerful that moves people and makes people think. That's what I try to do every time. You remember Dixie Chicks? You remember during the Bush era, you know, they were overseas and they made a statement. They said, we're embarrassed of our president when Bush Jr. was in power, you know, when the fucking government was tanking and, uh, uh, you know, you know, joblessness was like through the roof. And it was it was a really rough time when Bush was in power. And these girls, I mean, they're rock stars. The country music fans turn against them. They like were burning their CDs and like making videos and be like, we hate you, Dixie Chanks, because you took a made a political stance. You went overseas and talked shit about the president. Yeah, yeah, that's the power of freedom of speech. You can do that. It's not a problem. Look, there are a lot of people who are fans of Obama, including myself, right? But there are artists who have the right to go overseas and be like, I don't like President Obama. I don't like him because of X, Y, and Z. I may not agree with it, but they still have the right to do that, okay? And that's called the right of freedom of speech. But Dixie Chicks, man, they had shit come in their way in a different way, okay? Because Dixie Chicks are women, and they were getting, like, called whores, and they were getting rape threats they were getting uh people messaging them and writing to them and saying that they want to they want to you know they want to kill them they want to murder them they want to do all these horrible things uh fever 333 is one of the political bands tim oh yeah i bet um hey tim hey james you thought i was late (laughs) no you're here hi hi tim how are you um i feel like whenever there's a 
female that takes a political stance versus a male that takes a political stance are two very different things because with the females there's always that extra threat of rape it's always up with a guy it's just like i'm gonna fucking kill you and you know and i'm gonna burn you and blah 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 with women it's like first i'm gonna fuck you then i'm gonna kill you there's always that extra fucking part that's the really fucked up part okay for like nobody's gonna write to tom morello and be like, oh, Tom Morello, Morello, because you wrote, to, you're talking to talk about, you're making your songs and your, your stances about political BS. I'm going to come and rape you. I really doubt it if anybody's making rape threats at Tom Morello. Although Tom is pretty hot and I've seen him. And even at 56, he's fucking rocking. And I've, I, I saw his picture and I was like, all right, Tom, you got it going on. God bless. Okay. But nobody's making rape threats to Tom Morello. With women, it's always that additional thing. And let me tell you something. I am not immune to that. I have gotten that. Uh, not just that. I've gotten rape threats. I have gotten death threats. Uh, I have gotten... And who did I get these rape and death threats from? Fellow Muslims. Fellow Muslim men. Fellow Muslim Pakistani men. Okay? Who would write to me and say, we don't like your political stance, or we don't like the fact that you criticize the religion, or we don't like the fact that you said this, or, ah, oh, you're a Muslim woman, and why do you dress up this way, and why do you talk this way, and why are you so this, and why are you so that? And these motherfuckers come out and legit fucking write me messages and threaten my life. Yeah, that is the true story. That's the difference between Dixie Chicks and Rage Against the Machine, okay? That additional rape the additional rape part that comes with it. That's the shit that we have to live with. But let me tell you something. Scott Castaneda, that's this troll's name who was trolling Tom Morello, he got checked so hard, he quit Twitter. Yes, he did. Ugh, what a pussy. Actually, you know, I think about that. I thought about that. I was like, he's not a pussy. He's not a pussy. Because you know, you know, you know why he's not a pussy? Because pussies are resilient. Yeah, that's right. Pussies can take a pounding. Pussies have babies that they're pushing out of. Pussies take so much, like, abuse and still come out resilient, right? They, like, beat the shit out of a pussy, like, push a baby out. And then eventually they're like, it didn't bother me. And then they shut themselves back up. How do I know that p- pussies are resilient? Because I have one. That's how I know. Okay? So I'm not even going to insult a pussy by calling Scott Castaneda that. I'm going to call him a fucking moron is what I'm going to call Scott. Because pussies are awesome and he doesn't deserve to be called a pussy. Okay? You have to earn the right to be called a pussy. As a matter of fact, being a pussy is a fucking compliment. If somebody ever calls you a pussy, you tell them, be like, thank you very much. That means I'm resilient. That means I can take shit and still come out and top winning. That's what that means. I When somebody calls me a pussy, I'm like, thank you very much. I appreciate the compliment. I don't know what happened. I don't know why. If, if somebody calls you, oh, you're such balls. You're like a ball. I'd be like, you know what? I take offense to that. I'm like, balls? Because balls are delicate. Guys, you know what I'm talking about. If you, if I even aggressively look at a pair of balls, they, like, shrivel up. If I aggressively even stare or, like, grace a little too aggressively by a pair of balls, okay, they're in pain. The guy is, like, huddled over. He's, like, praying to God for, exi- like, praying to God that his balls survived that. Pussies? Not us. Remember when Trump was saying, grab her by the pussy? You know why he was saying that? First of all, you can never grab a woman by her pussy. Do you know how difficult it is to get your hands in between women's legs to try to grab it? What are you going to grab it with? Pussy don't come with handles. What are you going to grab a pussy by a hand? We don't have fucking handles hanging out that you can grab a pussy by. What are you, fucking idiot? doesn't work that way, okay? Do you know how many women don't even have thigh gap? I don't have a thigh gap. You know how difficult it is for me to try to grab my own pussy? And it's mine. You know how difficult it is? You can't. How the fuck is he going to try to say, I'm going to grab it by the pussy? You can't, Trump. It doesn't come with handles. Pussies don't come with handles, Trump. They don't. Okay? It's fucking stupid. It sounds 
like a guy who never has seen proper pussies, okay? He looks like a kind, kind of guy to me who gets his mushroom dick out, you know, pumps it up a few times, you know, he probably is a premature ejaculator and then calls it a night, okay? Because if any man, any real man who has went down on women multiple times knows how incredible vaginas are and how incredible pussies are, that you cannot just go and grab them, okay? You have to, like, really get into it. You can't just grab them. They're not fucking, you know, shopping bags, you know? That's not, that's not, how, that's not how pussies work, okay? Trump, that's my piece of information to you, Mr. Trump. Um, Rage Against the Machine. I like them. Actually, I actually, uh, I've become a really big fan of Tom Morello just researching him and everything that he's done. And I was reading about what Rage Against the Machine has been like, what, you know, the kind of stuff that they sing about the kind of stuff they talk about. I don't know if you guys are fans. Feel free to comment. I would love to hear it. Um, so Rage Against the Machine, like they, every time they do concerts, because all their concerts are so politically charged and everything what they do uh, always has a political meaning and a political stance. They did, they headlined an anti-Nazi league benefit in London, which sold out. This is a true story. There are people out there just like these fucking Nazis and these goddamn neo-Nazis are going out there and creating, uh, you know, whatever rallies, you know, uh, with their guns out and their overweight bodies out there trying to fucking take a stance to be like, you know, we are, we don't want immigrants here. Rage Against the Machine are such badasses. They went to headline this benefit and they sell out the show. And in 2015, they they take the money and they they basically you know, give the money to these causes. Like, it's incredible. Everything they do is political. Rage against the machine. That's what they do. It's like saying, um, you know, it's like somebody inviting me to come and do a show or headline a comedy show and be like, oh my God, Mona, I don't know. I don't know. Your material was so edgy. Like, God, can you like dumb it down? I mean, can you not be like so edgy, Mona? Believe me, I've heard that. I've had people tell me, hey, can you not be so edgy? Hey, can you not, like, can you not make that stance? Can you, like, not say those things? Uh, because I don't want to, because I feel uncomfortable, you know? Look, I get up on stage and I talk about the shit that I want to talk about because I know that only in America and maybe even some other Western countries, I have that freedom. If I go and talk like this in Pakistan, they'll probably shoot me by the time I fucking walk out of the club, Okay. If I go and try to talk like this in India, I'll probably get my ass whooped, okay? They'll probably toss me out of the country. First of all, they're not letting me in because I'm Pakistani. But even if they do, then they'll probably toss my ass out, okay? Because people will be so outraged for what I've said, okay? Just let me tell you something. As a female Muslim comedian, okay, uh, in, in America, my, my sheer existence is a controversy. Just me. I don't even have to open my mouth. I'm controversial to people. I have experienced... So much prejudice, not uh, most of the prejudice is from my own people, like people coming out and talking shit about me because I make them uncomfortable because my sheer existence, my political stances make them uncomfortable. My stances against these fucking religious mullahs and these goddamn Saudis, you know, Saudi government makes them uncomfortable. They don't want to talk about it. I do. Why would I not use my platform for something good? Why would I not use my platform to voice the things that people are thinking but are too scared to say? That's your job as an artist. That's what we do. We have our pulse on the, uh, we have our pulse on the, on the, we, you know, on the society's um, uh, culture. Like that's what we do. We're like pulse takers, right? We don't have Socrates anymore. We have comedians, okay? People, as a matter of fact, they did a research and found out that the general public gets most of their facts and their news pretty much from comedians, from late night talk shows. They watch late night talk shows. Okay. The one I hear what the comedians have to say, because they will tell you the truth. That's our job as comics. That's your job as an artist, even as an, you know, if you're a musician, but especially as comics, that's our job. Okay. To tell the truth. And that's why people go to listen to comedians to tell the fucking truth because everybody's talking their own shit. Everybody has their own goddamn agenda. But comedians don't come from that place. We come from a place of truth. 
We'll talk about probably talk shit about the left, but we would probably talk shit about the right too because we're talking about what the fucking truth is. Okay, we're talking about what people are thinking but are too afraid to say. Okay, I. Uh, this is a true story. Um, all of these stories are true. Um, I've been look. I've been doing comedy for about twelve years now, a little bit almost thirteen years now. Um, and I've seen a lot of rooms, a lot. Um, and I have, I was doing a show once with all these, uh, Muslim kids. There was all these younger Muslim kids. Um, and they were like in the twenties and thirties. Uh, and they saw me, um, and I got up there and I was being Mona. <laughs> the way Mona is. Okay. Potty mouth, edgy, says what's on her mind. Uh, and it gets me in trouble. It does. Sometimes it gets me in trouble. And that's fine. That just comes with the territory. And I'm not afraid to take the brunt of it. But I was doing the show. And everybody was having a merry old time. Okay, 20s, 30s. People were laughing their asses off. I'm making virgin jokes. I am talking sexual stuff. Uh, I'm talking. I have this one joke, uh, which a lot of people responded to. I have this joke that I talk about. <laughs> I say, have you ever tried masturbating? while your mom's in the next room praying. And so many people started busted out laughing because they had done it. You know, if you grew if you grew up in a Muslim household, you, you know, your mom is praying. Listen, they're told us to pray five times a day. I'm sorry, I don't have that kind of time, okay? But our parents apparently do. And they pray five times a day, okay? And if you want to rub one out in the middle of the day, if, you're, if your parents are praying five times a day, Somewhere along the line, your rubbing out is going to fall within that five times a day period, okay? And at some point, your mom or your parent is praying in the next room while you're rubbing one out watching Pornhub uh, in the next room, okay? That's the fucking fact. And then once I did that show, I had this hijabi girl, um, you know, and, and, you know, hijab is when you just, go, you know, cover your hair. Um, she was, her face was, uh, co- you know, her, her hair was covered. And she walks up to me after the show and she's like, I just want to let you know, you're not funny. You're not funny at all. I don't like it. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, okay. That's, I was like, oh, an in-person troll. How God has blessed me with gifts. Um, Let me tell you something about comedians. Um, We're not fans of hecklers, but if they come and get in our face, we thoroughly enjoy destroying them. We really do. And I really wanted to destroy this bitch because it was going to be a lot of fun. Um, And I was like, oh, I was like, why are you so angry? And she was like, I'm not angry. And I was like, well, you sound pretty angry to me. I was like, are you okay? She's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I was like, okay. I was like, well, you're absolutely entitled to have your opinion. And, um, you know, um, uh, well, everybody was having a good time. You chose to be miserable, and that's on you. Um, maybe that's just your default, or maybe that's maybe you were potty trained at gunpoint. I don't know what your childhood was like. Um, I was like, but you know, I was like, it sounds to me like there is some stuff that's happening in your life. There's something, some some stuff that you've experienced, and you're projecting it on me, um, and that you're angry about. And I don't know where this is coming from because I don't know you, and you don't know me. So I don't know where all this anger is coming up, you know? Well, everybody sat here and had a good time. You chose to be angry. So I don't know what that's about for you. Um, and for a moment, she was just like puffing and puffing. Um, and everybody's like, you don't have to talk to her, fuck her. And I was like, no, I, but I do want to talk to her, right? I do want to know where this crazy bitch's mind is coming from, okay? Maybe having the her hijab cover her head, maybe it, the, the heat underneath has boiled her brain out. I don't fucking know, okay? But I want to know what's up. Okay, so then um, finally, she walks up to me and she's like, you know what? I think you're right. This has nothing to do with you. I think this has to do with my own things and my own shit. Um, And you know what? I mean, that's fine. And I'm glad we had this conversation. And I was like, that's great. I was like, have you ever thought about fucking? Because it sounds like you could really use it. Um, I think you should get laid because you sound fucking miserable. Um, not that I'm saying that the, that fucking is the answer to everything, but I think it's fucking is the answer to a lot of things. I mean, you're definitely a, a lot calmer. You definitely think a lot clearly once you blow a load for a bit. That's just me though. Um, but, um, you guys, um, I love getting a troll put in their place, uh, just like Scott Castaneda did. And before I head out, um, I had a troll, 
uh, two days ago, uh, this Iranian guy. So let me tell you something about Iranians and America, especially in LA. They somehow believe that they are white. I shit you not. Iranians in LA think they're white. It's hysterical. Um, I am quarter Persian. Uh, my grandfather was from Iran. Okay. These guys think they're white. I know. Uh, you can you can laugh. It's 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 hysterical. So I um, did a panel on uh, racism and misogyny. I did a live stream, which you guys can check out on my YouTube channel this past weekend with comedians in the UK and Dubai uh, in LA. Uh, and I wanted to get like this global perspective of what's going on. And um, this uh, this uh, guy named uh, uh, Matthew Zandi is his name. Uh, and I made this po- I posted this flyer uh, to for people to come and join us uh, in the this Persian group, okay? And his response was no thanks. So I was just like, wow. I was like, lol, the need to comment. And then he started fucking trolling me. So I was like, listen, if you want to fucking troll, I'm gonna tro- troll you a hundred times harder back. So we can fucking play this game all day, okay? So then I took a screenshot of his picture. And all the trolling messages and me roasting him online. And I posted it on my Facebook post, which was amazing. And then he started following me on my Facebook post and started commenting and started fighting with people and kept calling me a clown. Now, I was like, first of all, thank you, because clowns make people happy. Okay. Uh, which I said, unlike you, uh, because I'm sure your wife is miserable, uh, because there's no fucking way you make her happy, because uh, you sound like a miserable cunt. Um, and then he kept trolling and he kept justifying and kept saying that he's white. And I was like, dude, you're as brown as I am. What the fuck are you talking about? Iranians in LA have a complex that they are white and somebody needs to tell them they are not white. Let me tell you something. Trump does not ban white countries. There was a ban on Iranians to come back into the U.S., If you were white, if Iranians were truly white, they would never have the fucking ban. So I don't know where they got. I know they they call themselves the original Aryan race and all that. But I'm sorry. That's not how America looks at you. They look at you as brown immigrants, just like me. Okay? I am a brown immigrant, and I'm proud of it. And I don't have fucking identity crisis like a lot of the Iranians do here, apparently. So this guy starts commenting and said, well, I work for the Department of Justice. And I was like, that's even worse. The fact that you think that it's okay to go and say that you're white and you want to deny your own ethnicity for what? So you can blend in because, you you know, he's like, oh, he's like, I don't want to play the victim by talking about racism. I'm like, how is it talking about racism and systemic racism in America? constitutes as anti-American and constitutes as being as playing a victim. You're not a victim. You're talking about the shit that is currently happening. These are facts. Nobody's making this shit up. Breonna Taylor was killed while she was sleeping. Okay. Everybody comes out and makes this argument. Well, if you just follow the police, if you just, if you just listen to what the cops have to say, you'll be fine. That's not true. That's not true. If you're black in America, that is simply not true. Let me tell you something. Every person uh, who is non-black, okay, if you are a fucking in a privileged position, including myself, and I'm a fucking immigrant, okay, I'm not even born here, okay, I have never once been pulled over by the cop and worried for the safety of my life, never, it's just never happened, it's never occurred to me, because brown people don't really get murdered by cops the way black people do in America, because that's the fucking truth, okay, I really fucking doubt it if ever, anybody's ever going to, like, the cops are ever going to break into my apartment and, you know, and confuse me for another brown girl and then shoot me to death in my own bed. I really fucking doubt it. But if you're a black woman, that is a very, very high possibility that may happen to you because you live in America. It's because you are black in America. You're not even doing anything. You don't even have to listen to the cops or follow the cops. You're sleeping in your house in your fucking bed and the cops come in, barge in, no warrant, confuse you for someone, shoot 20 rounds, okay, and eight end up hitting Breonna Taylor and kill her on the spot. And then they shut the file. And now recently the file and information came out and it's scrubbed clean. Like there's nothing on there, right? And these cops wash their hands and they walk away. That's bullshit. We can't fucking live like that anymore, okay? If you're a brown and black person, 
or especially this fucking asshole, like this guy, Matthew Zandi, who's a fucking idiot, okay, who's like in denial that, uh, you know, somehow that Iranians are white and they're above the fucking racism issue and they don't get racism. Well, if you don't get racism, that means you're a fucking racist. That's what the fuck that means. That means you don't have compassion for people. That's what the fuck that means, okay? That you, you know, he's coming out and he's like, oh, I'm a college educated guy. Well, college education don't mean shit if you're a fucking ignorant asshole. It doesn't mean if you don't have compassion, if you don't have open minded, who gives a shit if you have a master's degree? Who gives a shit if you have a PhD? I'm sorry. That is that is not an excuse. And then he said the most brilliant thing that he could have he, he couldn't have given me a better weapon to just fucking slay him with. And then he said, you guys, he said, I was forced to write white on my application for jobs and for schooling. Are you out of your fucking mind? I didn't know that there were gunmen waiting for you while you were filling out application to put a gun to your head and be like, check white or I'm going to shoot you. What the fuck is Matthew Zandi talking about? Matthew Zandi has lost his goddamn mind. He has severe identity crisis. And then he kept saying that his children are mixed. So I went to his Facebook profile to see how mixed his kids are. His kids are so fucking white. I'm just like, what are they mixed with? Racism and confusion? What the fuck are they mixed with, you asshole? Okay? And this guy literally kept fighting every single person that was commenting on the post because he wanted to prove the point that Iranians are white and it's totally justified to call themselves white. Iranians, dear Iranians, okay? As somebody who's also part Iranian, this is a PSA. Please stop checking yourself off as white. If there is no box... Write and make a box, click, check other, and write Iranian. That's the age we live in today. We are no longer in the 80s and 90s and not even the 2000s. We are in 20, well, we are in 2000, we're in 2020. You can make the other box, check it off, and write Iranian, okay? It's fucking stupid. You sound like an asshole when you say that. I was forced. I was forced to check off white. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being white. What I am saying, there's something wrong with having goddamn identity crisis, okay? You know what? I would fucking love it. I would love this so much that next time he goes to Iran and he comes back to the airport and they detain him because he went to Iran, I really want to fucking see how he's going to get himself out of by checking himself off white. I want to see how much of his whiteness is going to save him in that moment. So what I'm trying to say is don't be like Scott Castaneda. Don't be like Matthew Zandi, okay? Don't be that. Don't be like Scott Castaneda who thinks that political BS in music, is, you know, for a band, Rage Against the Machine, they're fucking Rage Against the Machine. They're political as fuck. Matthew Zandi, who thinks that he is white because he's Iranian, because they were the original Aryan race, <laughs> check yourself, you're not fucking white. You're as brown as they come. You, as a matter of fact, might even resemble some some fucking you know Middle Eastern folks that might be on the fucking watch list. Okay, so check yourself, Matthew Sandy. All right, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. If you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, if it's your first time being here, welcome. I would uh, you know I do these. I'm doing a 30 day challenge every weekday between six and eight p.m. I'm doing a picking a brand new topic. And you can catch me here ranting and raving, making jokes about stuff. And you can subscribe to my channel. I would so love it. I will see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place, same place. Love you guys. Thank you very much.